break yeah. here. Um, do you want to go well, for no, it? NCAA, you guys, NCAA president Mark Emmert, who is probably one of the most um, – Lightning rod names in college sports, in sports in general, is stepping down, effective in June of 2023. He'll serve out the rest of this year into the, I guess, school year of 22-23 and step down as president of the NCAA. I um, just, and this was just a quick uh, you know, history grab in my mind, trying to compare him to a president of the United States uh, to kind of describe his tenure. I know a lot of people don't know a lot about Millard Fillmore, and that's a good reason because he wasn't a very good president. But Millard Fillmore uh, was uh, famous for the 1850 Compromise, which was about slavery, uh, which somehow angered both pro-slavery and anti-slavery people so much that they did not want him to be president anymore on either side. At the powder keg time in American history, uh, in the 15 years before this, or 10 years before the Civil War or so. Uh, so that's kind of... Let's remember who he works for. Yeah. Yes, but Mark Emmert could not make a decision a lot. I mean, like that was kind of his 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 big thing. He just could not make a decision or there was not really leadership at the top. He was kind of a talking head. And when they did make a decision, no one was happy about it. I mean, it wasn't good for anyone. And so he will, I mean, for I mean, for worse. There's no for better with Mark Emmert. And but I hate Mark to, Emmert works for presidents he as does. well. And so a lot of times, maybe he took the blame for presidents. But I thought of him in the way you thought of him, as somebody who wouldn't freaking make up his mind or help something move. And now you have well, all this craziness in the landscape of college athletics because the NCAA, who he was the president, wouldn't make decisions. I mean, that's the thing of it is name something important that Mark Emmert did in his entire tenure that you really, that stands out to you. I can't think of a single thing. I'm sure there's something that he was a part of, but yes, he answers to school presidents and whatnot, but ultimately it's about what's best for the sport. There is a head for a reason because you are the final decision maker. And yes, there's a lot of politics involved, but dude, you basically did nothing for like the last three, four years. I mean, just sat on your freaking hands the entire time not my issue. Well, it is, but I can't do anything about it. So government, fix it for me. Schools, fix it for me. He, I, I just, I don't know what he did. I don't know what he did. And you see from the, the media right now, uh, there's already relaying a lot of just size of uh, relief from schools across the country that are relieved that he's gone. And not to mention, they signed him to an extension a year ago. Remember the reactions yeah. to that? Like, what in the hell are y'all doing? And now, this is, quote-unquote, a mutual decision. I don't know how mutual well, it really was, but... I'll say this. The, 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 the problem here going forward with the NCAA is that, one, we have no idea what their governance structure is going to be. So when they select a new president, which it says, you know, it's by June 30th of next year of 2023 or before if they have a president. Well, they're probably, if I want that job, I want to know what the rules are going to be and what my job actually is if I'm taking over for Mark Emmert. And two, if, if they don't know that, what they're going to have is another gimp like Mark Emmert, who's just going to sit there and take it from everybody and not do anything. The new NCAA president needs to look people in the eye and be able to tell them, I appreciate your position, but we're moving forward this way because this is what is best. You know what his legacy, his legacy is, is actually we think of NIL and the transfer portal, Pete Thamel, I worked and looked this up, I remember this. His legacy of incompetence will reverberate long after he's gone uh, flub the TV deal for the NCAA tournament, which experts say is so undervalued, undervalued it will be mocked, laughed at at the cost of NCAA and billions of dollars. Well, there's been a lot of mocking and laughing, just the state of uh, college athletics uh, in terms of not the, the product necessarily, but all of the, the changes that are going on. And, you know, I don't put all that blame at his feet solely, but there was a massive amount of inaction uh, over the last several years. And we all saw... That light that was really, it was like a little pin light, it was like a star off in the distance. And all of a sudden, it was like a flashlight. And all of a sudden, it was like a floodlight. And then it was a train. And then it was a train right in front of you. And he just watched it the entire freaking time without even taking a step to the left or to the right. And I will never respect that. I know that not all of it is simple as just making decisions because there are le like legal issues and there are politics involved and all that. 
But I'm sitting here, and I still don't know a single thing that he did, really. That was, that was beneficial for college athletics. And maybe there's something that I'm just not thinking of. But I feel like, nope, that pretty much just sums up his whole run, was he just sat there and took it and didn't change it when he could have. And they just said, everybody else take care of it and, you know, fix well, our problem for us. And I'll, let's talk about o the O'Bannon lawsuit, which is really the thing that, that knocked – I mean, he was the president during the O'Bannon lawsuit. And instead of being the leader who told the presidents, look, we're going to lose. So instead of losing and looking ridiculous, let's try to find a way to lose gracefully here and make some compromises yeah. before this all goes along. No, that's not what he did. He just said, well, we believe in the model that we have. And blah, 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 blah. that was his line. But the whole time, the whole time, the new president, and I'll say this again, has to be someone who can look the presidents in the eye and say, what you're doing is wrong. It's not going to work. Let's Think of this differently and move on. You know, Goodell has a lot of negatives in his career, but one of the things that Goodell has done is at times not been afraid to tell the owners what needs to be done, well, even David, though he David works Stern. for Stern. Yes. I mean, you know, yeah. so, you know, there are good, I mean, nobody likes commissioners. Mark Emmert could have done a ton of great things. Look, Bud Selig actually did a lot of good things for Major League Baseball, but do we like Bud Selig? No, but he's better than Rob Manfred. Oh, yeah. So, that's not even a you know, that, that's, that's where you learn. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of a thankless job, but it's really going to be thankless if you suck out loud at it like Mark Emmert did. Yeah, and you know what? How much of that was intentional, though? He just was basically paid to sit there and just take it, you know? So if I'm somebody who's a candidate for the next, you know, president of the NCAA, I got to have some assurances too. Like, what are we actually able to fight here? What can we actually do? What are we actually in charge of outside of the, you know, the holding the tournament, basically? Like, what is our responsibility to college athletics? Do you guys know? I mean, mm -hmm. at this point in time, do y'all really know? They have no identity. They're laughed at. They're not respected. Schools don't take them seriously. They don't even take the punishment seriously anymore. I mean, it is a shell of itself. And so you talking about the Big 12 needing a visionary. They need the visionary of visionaries to be able to, to figure out how to kind of steer college athletics into a – into a, a good place. Um, you know, I don't think it's all as doom and gloom as it sounds sometimes. It's just that there are, you know, stories that keep building up as far as, you know, the the life wallet guy from Miami spending half a million dollars every other day on basketball players. It's just kind of ridiculous. But, um, you know, college sports is still very strong, and it can be even stronger, and it can last as long as it's lasted for another 100 years or whatever. But they got to have the right leadership, and I don't think that was Mark Emmert. So uh, I just hope the person that steps in next isn't stepping in just to make a bunch of money to be a pincushion, basically. Daniel Acton on the chat room, that's actually good news. You see fast. Is Oliver Luck taking this job? His name comes up for any of these I see Kirk Schultz already being mentioned a bunch. The Washington the, State, yeah. Yeah, the guy that uh, Kansas State fans aren't real thrilled about. <laughs> Baylor Bear 03, will the NCAA be relevant in five years, or will power conferences choose to do their own thing? That's the question. You see fast, we can never have nice things. Mark Ratner, Mark Emmert is, was a complete failure. Uh, will the NCAA even exist in 2024? There's another Mark uh, Oliver Luck. Uh, the new NCAA president from Mike needs to stand up to ESPN to ensure the NCAA they control college sports instead of a network. And Daniel, I uh, hated Miles Brand due to the McMurray mascot story, which was, of course, another former NCAA name. One other note, at Kilgore College, somebody did ask, uh, Mike, where is Kilgore College? It's about two and a half, three hours from here east of Waco. It's about two hours east, southeast of Dallas, and 45 minutes or so west of Shreveport, right there off of I-20. It is East uh, Texas. It is East Texas. <laughs> yeah. Is the oil museum still there? Athens, Tyler, yes. Big oil. Kilgore. Longview. Big oil territory. Longview just north of Kilgore. Yeah, big a bunch of oil. Yeah, a bunch of uh, oil wells in that area and, and oil uh, throughout that area. When we come back, John 